I'm very excited. This is going to be a video where I'm going to be filming myself and you will not only be able to hear me, but actually see me today. And if this is a nicer way for you to be learning from me, please let me know in the comments and I will try to make more future videos like that. For this special occasion, I would like to cover one of my favorite topics in chess, which is central control, space, and space advantage. I get students from total beginners to 2000, and very rarely do I get a student who understands what exactly space advantage is and how it differs from space. So I think that today I'm going to boost your position understanding, and you could implement that in your games right away. So let's change this scene into the one that has the board in it. And let's talk about one axiom in chess. Axiom means something that doesn't require any proof. That most of the time, pieces are best placed in the center. So if I have, for example, knight placed in the middle of the board, that is considered to be a better knight than the knight on the rim most of the time. But we have a natural question that arises. Why do we need pawns in the center? Well, the reason for that is actually quite different than most people know. And the exactitude here is super important because if you don't understand what exactly you're better at, you have no chance of using that advantage. So when we're playing a move like d4 or e4, the pawn is going to shield your bishops and knights from opponent's pawns. So if we instead play a move like e3 and then we wake up and we're going to move the pieces to the center, like for example, knight to f3, the knight will be chased away from the middle. Same would happen if we were, for instance, play bishop to c4, opponent can kick us away from the center. But when we play e4, we're able to play knight to the very middle without it being kicked away, and the bishop to one of the central squares without it being kicked away. Another great thing about that pawn is that it claims the so-called space, territory in the opponent's position, and it will prevent development of opponents, bishops and knights if they do it not in the right way. So for instance, if they play knight f6, you're capable of simply kicking away their pieces. All right, so far we're good. Let's try evaluating a few positions before we get into something more advanced because I have something for experienced players today as well. So in this position, um, engine would say that black is much better. The evaluation would be around minus 0.9. Why exactly black is better in this position? Black is better because black's bishops and knights have more potential to become active than white's bishops and knights. Black's knights will be able to go to the center as well as bishops without them being chased away by opponent's pawns. However, some of the white pieces, even if it's just one, will not be able to be developed actively. As you can see, the bishops are already blocked and knights will always, for the rest of the game, will be susceptible to the pawn attacks when black is going to hide and move forward at the right moment. For this reason, engine would say, or computer would say, that black is much better. But if we move to a position like this, a lot of the students that I get who are new to my lessons would evaluate this position as slightly at least better for black, if not much better for black. Here, the position is dead equal. And why is it so? First of all, there are no bishops and knights, and rooks and queen, they do not benefit most of the time from the extra pawns that are more advanced in the center. Rooks only care about open lines. They want to be placed on semi-open file, open file, or ranks. So white rook, for example, on h1 would be much more happy if I played a move like h4 so that I could lift it to some new open lines. There is no principle that says rooks belong on open, uh, sorry, on, in the center. There is a principle though that rooks do belong on open files. And the queens, they simply move in too many ways to be restricted by pawns. So white's queen has no lesser potential than the black's queen in this position. White could go queen to f3, g4, h5, or pawn to c3, and then the queen can be actively placed on the queen side. So that's why computer would say that this is equality and you could drag very and draw very interesting conclusions out of this. That when you're having a position, let's say more space, let it be something like this. What exactly you're better at is that your bishops and knights have higher potential and they're going to occupy better squares than black's bishops and knights. And this advantage is reduced when you're exchanging a lot of minor pieces. 
I say that in principle, if you change one pair of pieces, it doesn't alleviate opponent's problems. But if you change two pair of pieces, it already most of the time will make um, opponent's problems less uh, severe. And uh, then your space uh, advantage is diminishing. Now, let's take a look at a position that I like to show to my master students and try to trick them. Um, I would be showing them this and ask, what did they find Why better here? And as a rule of thumb here, uh, based on what we know about space, this is not advantageous. I want to draw a very distinct line between space and space advantage. Space is an advantage when we're restricting at this single minor piece or king of opponents. And space is simply when our pawns are more advanced than opponents. So right now, why does space? Because our pawns are more advanced than max. But neither the knight on d7 is restricted because it could go to f6 without paying any price. And the knight could go to e5 without any kind of damage that black would incur in the pawn structure. So neither these pieces are uh, restricted, they're very active, and white's advantage is non-existent. If you turn on computer here, it will say absolute zero. However, if we look at a position like this, white again has space, it's same position with just two extra pair of minor pieces. White is having a significant advantage because the knight on d7 this time is restricted. If it goes to e5, then uh, there's a increment of uh, pawn structure damage, it cannot go to f6 and the bishop on c8 cannot go anywhere active right now at all and due to the restrictment of these two pieces white is overwhelmingly better of course there is also this other side to the story that white has way more room to maneuver their pieces and let's say if we want to go for the e5 break in this game there are lots of active squares that we could choose for our pieces in order to support that break. So for example, I could maneuver the knight to d3, I could play f4, I could play the bishop to f3 so I could put the rooks and queen on the e-file. And as you can see, I could maneuver my pieces to many different active squares in order to support that main pawn break that I want to go for. Instead, if black decides to go for something like f5, try supporting it, for instance, with the knight. There is no simply room for black be doing that. So this is a difference between space and space advantage, that space is advantageous when you're restricting at least single minor piece of opponents or king in some end games, and that's why we need pawns in the center, that they shield our bishops and knights from opponents pawns, and at the same time we're restricting their bishops and knights. I hope you can successfully implement this into your game. If you like the lesson, consider hiring me as your personal online chess coach. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next video.